at the eight years of President Buhari, what will be left of a country like Nigeria as of today? Even if Tinubu means well, where do we place the dead? Even if Tinubu means well and wants to do the magic, where we live, how we live six. Let me quickly say this to Nigerians. They might not be aware of this. And you probably should might not be aware of this. There are loans taken in the Buaris administration. Some for 50 years with moratorium that will not start paying in 50 years. Some for 20 years. Children yet unborn will face this kind of situation. The last administration has launched this country. But the only thing I want to say to President Tinubu, without fear, favor, and let, the president should stop praising President Buhari. I watched live television program of the president telling the Nigerians that president, uh, former President Buhari did well. Let it be clear to Nigerians that, yes, I am the president. I asked for this job. I meant well. The economy that I met was a dead economy. Nobody can deny that. There's no miracle you can do in nine months. That is the former governor of Ekiti State, Ayodele Fayosi, making a case for Bola Ahmed Tinibu. According to him, he said Bola Ahmed Tinibu inherited a dead economy. He's always said that when a failure fails, he always blames everybody except himself. When a craftsman fails to make a very good sculptor, he blames it too. All right, Bola Ahmed Tinibu inherited a debt economy from who? From President Bola, from President Muhammad Buhari. So, who is President Muhammad Buhari? President Muhammad Buhari is the immediate past president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria under the party APC, the same party that Bola Ahmed Tinibu shared. According to President Bola Ahmed Tinibu, he said, and I quote, that I made President Muhammad Buhari the president. I single-handedly made him the president. He has retired. I went to his own time in, in Daora and I asked him, all right, you need to come out, out of your retirement and become the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Now, let me take you back to history as of when this happened. In 2011, during the presidential election that Gulag Jonathan won, President Muhammad Buhari garnered a total of 12 million plus votes. And most of these votes came from the core north, the northwestern state. Now, if you follow the subsequent elections that President Muhammad Buhari has, con has, has participated in, you will notice a, a, a sequential vote of 8 million, 9 million, 10 million, and 12 million votes. So, President Buhari has a long lot of votes, a vote bank coming from the north. And these votes were all coming from one particular region, the northwestern state. They believe in him so much. They saw him as an idol and they were so fanatical about him. That was why during the 2011 presidential election, when he failed to win the election, he got a 12 million vote. President Jonathan got 22 million vote. When he failed to, to be declared the winner, there was what we call the post-election violence in the north that saw so many people killed during that period. All right, so when it was noticed by this politician that President Buhari has this long lock of votes, 12 million votes, so what people like President Bola Tinibu did was to go to President Muhammad Buhari, okay, let us align with the vote coming from the south and the vote coming from the north. It is already enough to make you the president. And that was how APC was formed. So if you look at it, the motive of forming APC is just for them to take power from the, the Southern, which is President Gulok, Ebele, Jonathan. They just want to take power from him. They didn't want to change the economy of the country. They didn't want to make leadership accessible to the ordinary Nigerians. That was the reason the moment APC took over power, it became propaganda upon propaganda. They started off first by blaming PDP. They spent all their eight years in office blaming PDP. Why? Because they don't have anything to offer. When somebody does not have anything to offer, they resort to blame games. Because anyone that has anything to offer goes to action immediately. Let me take you back to what is happening in Abia State. I can say that's been ruled by the PDP by, by the PDP for close to 60 years. There has been nothing visible, nothing that has been done in Abia State. Abia State has a very dead economy. But immediately Alex Oti of Labour Party took over. He has never for once blamed anybody. He moved into action immediately and start working. Go to Abia State today and see the visible achievement of the governor. Everything is in order. Things are going well in Abia State. No blame game. But today, after 
eight years of President Muhammad Buhari, after messing the economy, which Bola Ahmed Tinubu supported, even prior to the election, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is saying that he is going to continue the legacy of President Muhammad Buhari. So after eight years and after taking over, the same APC is blaming APC for giving them a debt economy. What a disgrace. Okay, let us assume that President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is not aware that he's inheriting a debt economy. What exactly was he campaigning for? What was his motive of running for the president? Is it not a fixed issue? Do you, are you running for the president to come and enjoy yourself? Of course, Nigeria has knowledge of problem that is bothering her. And it is your duty as a president to fix it. And you campaign on that promises. That you're going to do this ending, ending security. You're going to improve the life, the standard of living of the citizens. And now you've been given the mantle. And all we keep hearing is that you inherited a debt economy. Peter Obi White campaigning said Nigeria is at the brink of collapse, one bad leadership away from collapse, from becoming a face state. He enumerated the problems of this country from insecurity to high cost of living to inflation to lack of education to unemployment. He enumerated everything. And I'm sure President Bola Tinubu was listening to him because at one point during the campaign, he mocked Peter Obi. For using statistics. Now nah, statistics will go chop. So President Bola Metinibu should not come and tell anyone that he's not aware of this problem. If you are not aware of this problem. So why did you take the job? What were you campaigning on? He did not campaign, we know. All he campaigned on was on the background of a Miloko. So that means the reason why they formed that alliance with President Muhammad Obari was because they wanted to take over. Not because they wanted to bring good governance to the people. Now they have the power. Fix the mess that your predecessor, which you brought into power, created for you. You are complaining. You are complaining. Peter B said, I will not I will not complain. I will not blame anybody. I will move into action. The plumbings are there. If you are prepared for this job, if you are prepared for what is ahead of you, you will not be complaining or blaming anybody. It is okay for you to meet the problem and try to fix them. But it's not okay. It is not acceptable that you met a problem and you make the problem worse times 50. Because what Nigerians are currently experiencing is worse economic, worse inflation, worse insecurity. Of course, we are experiencing this in under President, President Buhari. But what Nigerians are currently experiencing now is worse. When Tinibu was inaugurated as the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Naira was 700 per dollar. But today, Naira hit all time high of 1,900. What is, what, what, which explanation can you give to this? This is unacceptable. And anyone that is coming to make a case for this failure is, is, is not saying the truth. It's economical with the truth. It's obvious that these men in power do not have the solutions. They just want to take over power just to satisfy their lifelong ambition of becoming the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria.